thank you for uh, joining us today. You know why I'm excited? What is kumbaga, what excites me today? Siguro kanina you showed you show you, you saw my you know, post on my under drawing that I did 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason why I'm excited kasi yung mga nagturo sa akin on how to do it, kung paano yung uh, natuto po ako. So, in, in, in short, kaya if you want to learn uh, how to draw, ito po opportunity ng mga anak ninyo to know how to draw. Ted is doing a uh, an online no, drawing. Ito nga ako na. Nakita ko lang yung Ted. So, I was thinking, oh nga, no, pwede ko i-post to. Ah. So, kanina ko lang naisip yun, actually. It's been uh, really to arouse interest from the people. So, for, for us, not welcome everyone. Uh, what do we do, no? And, uh, for we, this is Homeschoolers Roundtable. The reason Chai and I thought of this, kasi many parents, no, kumbaga, they felt anxious on how can we teach our children now. So by the way, uh, I am a homeschooling parent. No, my kids are already adults; they graduated in college. No, we homeschooled our children from grade school to high school. No, so of course this is not to say that homeschool is homeschooling is better, but I'm saying this is an alternative or option for us. Na pwede naman pala, pwede naman palang matuto yung mga anak natin through homeschooling with our guidance. In fact. To tell you, no, uh, my kids got full scholarship in, in college. No? Yung tatlo ko po na yan, poor full scholarship. Walang binayaran si Ronnie. <laughs> and I really, thank you Lord, wala akong binayaran. So, they got full scholarship from La Salve. Nil, yung dalawa, isa sa mid-college. No? So, and, and, and the friends, that, the people that are close to me, yung mga kaibigan ko, nakakuha rin ang mga scholarship ang anak nila. In fact, yung dalawa nasa US pa nga. Si Edgar Cartera, yung nagsalita dito, and some other friends of mine. So they, we were siguro the first adapters of homeschooling. No? That was in the 90s, 1992. So the reason why we put up this community, Homeschool Roundtable, this was born out of a desire to help parents, teachers, and students in making homeschooling experience fun, effective, and life-changing through collaboration and building supportive community. That is the goal of this community. Tutulungan po namin kayo on how to run your homeschool. No? In fact, Leia is here doing the homeschooling. Gumagawa na po kami ng program for everybody, no? Kaya later we'll ask for more, uh, ano sa inyo, question po. Ano yung gusto nyo? We will arrive to a, a forum or kumbaga discussion para for everyone. So, uh, we always start with education nuggets. Let me share with you what Annie Al Albers says. Sabi niya, Art is something that makes you breathe with a different kind of happiness. That's why, Sir Ted, I'm so happy today. Looking at the artwork that I did long time ago, parang iba yung feeling ko, parang, oh my goodness, ito pa nagagawa ng art. I want to go back to the, ano ngayon eh, to the drawing board eh, at mag-drawing uli eh. Parang the feeling, no? Sorry kung hindi nakakulit yung iba. There's such a feeling of happiness for me, no? Uh, looking at the drawing that I did 20 years ago through Teacher Ted. All right. So, ito lang po. Mute your mic while in session. Use the chat box to comment and to ask questions. Any question po, sasagutin ng ating uh, guest speaker ngayon, si Teacher Ted. No? And uh, to, ano, to share uh, introduction at pakikilala ni Cha, ang ating, uh, ating guest na si Sir Ted Luna. No? Related ba kay Luna, yung artist Luna, si Sir Ted Luna? <laughs> Kapili doon. No? Mahabang ahead, usapan cha. yan. <laughs> Please uh, introduce our, our guest speaker, si Sir Ted. Alright, good afternoon. Very short, very sweet, visual artist and painter for 36 years, an art instructor for 34 years, and a homeschooling parent for 22 years. Puro mga 20 plus, 30 plus years to. Please uh -huh. <laughs> Please welcome, um, Mr. Ted Luna. So, sir, take it away. All right, sige. Okay, thank you so much uh, for inviting me, uh, Brother Ronnie. See, Brother Ronnie, we go a long way back. Um, thank you, Cha, for your help. And uh, Benji. So, I was asked to speak about art, and this is the topic that I intend to share with you today. Uh, translating visions to reality through art. 
And uh, the biblical basis that I would like to share with you for this is a passage from Proverbs 29.18, which, which says, where there is no vision, people perish. No? So having a vision is so important that uh, you cannot help but have a set goal on which to uh, move forward to. Because if not, what will happen is you wander away from the path. You turn to the left, you turn to the right. And eventually, ang sabi dito, without visions, people perish. So we need to capture a vision. Um, let me start out by saying not all people are visionaries. No? Um, although being a visionary can be learned, but for some people it is innate. There are children who as early as mga five years old, they know already what they want to be when they grow old. No? But there are, there are people who go through life seemingly on a hit and miss basis, trial and error. Subukan ko nga ito. No? Tapos pag, if it, they don't succeed, lipat na naman, iba na naman yung pursuit. No? Which, is, I, which I feel is medyo, it, it will work against us no? kung trial and error ang approach natin to, to, to life. So um, my topic for today is just to show you how art can benefit people not only because you would want your children to become art professionals, but whatever career path they take, definitely their art training will benefit them. No? So um, uh, it will help them translate visions to reality through the art training that they have. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, these are facets of an artistic training that equips us, that can equip us for concretizing visions or for making the visions into a reality. Now, so the first one is capturing a vision. How do you capture a vision? Uh, next slide, please. So the question here is, uh, you can capture a God-given vision or you can concoct your own visions. No? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are people who very early on in life, mga bata pa lang, five years old. Ako, five years old pa lang ako, I already knew what I wanted to be when I, when I grow up. No? So as early as when I was five years old, I, already, I was already dabbling with drawing and paint. And I already said, I will, when I grow up, I want to become an artist. <laughs> of course, uh, my parents did agree, didn't agree to that. So, nag, uh, iba iba pa yung courses na kinuha ko. I, I spent time taking up management, four years in management. I took up uh, three years of theology because I had a calling from the Lord. And lastly, I took uh, four years of fine arts. So practically, I spent more than 11, 12 years in college now only to go back to watch to that which I have earlier envisioned it's, and which I feel is a God-given vision for me. No? So the vision is a life goal. It's meant to be a lifelong pursuit. No? So definitely, it should have clarity and that's where art comes in. Art uh, enables us to visualize. No? That's, that's what art equips children to do, to visualize. And I think that's especially important, especially in a generation where we are in right now. And I would venture on to say that this, I believe, is the most distracted generation ever. No? With, all the, with all the gadgets and games and tablets that we have, you know, there is so much information, there is so much knowledge, but there's very little wisdom. No, so and dami daming alam na mga tao, you can Google everything and get information, but as to how to apply that information, wala. So, that's why we need to have a God-given vision. No? What is a God-given vision? Well, it's a vision that comes from God. 
And it's something that is aligned with the gifts that you have been given, which also comes from God. No? So one of the most tragic things that can happen is if you pursue a vision and then your abilities are not, not really aligned with that vision. You know? So you'll go through life trying, getting frustrated, failing, and not accomplishing anything or make, not making progress with the vision that you set. So when you have a God-given vision, it should be aligned with the gifts and abilities that you have, which makes it actually a lot easier. Because no? when you're doing your God-given thing, it just comes very naturally to you. It's not even considered work when you enjoy it. No? It just flows and you enjoy what you're doing. Hindi ka napapagod kasi gusto mo yung ginagawa mo. No? And the vision that you have, it, it remains in your mind. It's something that's very clear. No? So for people who have, um, if you have a background, if you have a background in, in uh, studying the Bible, uh, one of the best um, places to get your your instructions from God would be his, from his word. No? So when I was, uh, I would say, let me just allow me to please testify, just share some, some uh, experiences with you. When I was probably 29 years old, on my second course, I was a student at the Philippine Baptist Seminary. I took up three years of theology, but before I, w I was uh, to graduate, I I I had uh, I asked God what would you really want me do to do when I graduate would you want me to be a pastor or or would you want me to be something else and the Lord spoke to me very clearly through two passages of scripture uh, the first one is from 1 Thessalonians 4:11 it says make it your ambition to lead a quiet life attend to your own business and work with your hands the second uh, scripture passage which the Lord gave me after I fasted and after I prayed is from Exodus 31 and it says, I have given him um, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and in all kinds of craftsmanship to make artistic designs. So my life goal, my vision was based on these two passages of scripture and I did not deviate from it. All throughout the 34 years that I have been teaching as an artist, uh, I did not turn to the left or to the right. There were lean times, may mga times na uh, I was not earning enough as I should, but I did not deviate. No? So I think the danger sometimes when you don't have a vision is like, pag ang pursuit mo lang is, is to earn money, tapos biglang yung inumpisahan mo, hindi kumikita. Alis ka na, iiwan mo na, palta, iba, start ka na naman ng iba. No? So ganun yung mga nangyayari sa tao, trial and error, because they don't have a vision. Uh, I live here in BF Homes and just two blocks away, there's what we call the yung Pergola Mall. And I have, have observed businesses here. No? Mag-uumpisa, then after six months, they fold. They, a business comes up, uh, and then after six months, wala na, sarado na. And it happens, <laughs> tuloy tuloy yung ganun, bukas sara, bukas sara, because people really don't know what they want in life because they have not captured a vision. Or maybe they have visions, but they were, they were self-concocted visions based on motives were, which were not necessarily in line with, with their gifts and their abilities. No? So... Uh, uh, capturing a vision as a relevant ex exercise for our students. How do the students capture a vision? When they do a uh, training, when they start learning art, we ask them to start with a picture reference. No? Students would normally ask me, uh, Teacher Ted, can we, can we just draw from our imagination? And my answer would be, well, yes and no. no? If you have been painting for a long time, then you can paint from your imagination. But if you're just starting out, you don't have enough uh, visual images stored in your memory bank. So you have to work from a, a picture on which you base your, your drawing or your art from. Because otherwise, 
if you work from your imagination, the, the vision that you see in your imagination can be very fleeting. No? One time it's there, the next moment it's gone. <laughs> no? So, kailangan medyo steady yung vision na nakikita mo. And that's why we let them work from a picture reference, which is actually how it's done ever since. Lahat ng mga artistic training ever since, even during the Renaissance period, laging ganun. They always start with the picture reference to base their artworks on. So this is the first point that I would like to share with you, capturing a vision. So we train our students to capture a vision and to work based on that uh, steady picture that they see. So I don't know how we go about it, Brother Ronnie. Are we going to entertain questions in between the points or would you want me to go through the whole message or i'll be open actually to questions even after each yeah. point if you have something that you would want yeah, to I have, ask i have to comment sir ted a little bit ano? pero if there are questions ano, you just plug in the question dito sa, in our chat box and then what we're gonna do is i will try if uh, i can interrupt sir ted to, ano, to, to let your question be answered by you no, okay lang yon. But we can continue. If there's no question, you, you just continue. But before you go ahead, Mer Merna, I just want to add something certain about what you mentioned, na yung, yung uh, vision. Ano, for, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm excited. You know why? Kasi I realized what I did long time ago with my children is because I allowed them, because at their young age, kasi minsan, Ako, in my personal life, hindi ko kagad nakita yung what I'm doing today. Eh. Kaya ako nasa telecoms ako, pag-technical. Pero hindi naman yung, yung what I really want to do. Eh. Parang gano'n man. And my kids, ito yung maganda eh. When they were young, talaga, they, ano already, they captured the vision already that they want to be an artist. No? Ako nga yung umaayaw eh. Kasi hindi ko alam, may pera pa sa ano. Pera eh, no? <laughs> Can you feed your family, your boys? Diba? That's, my, that's in my mind eh. Can you feed your family na doing an art? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. But, you know, I realized, uh, ang bunso ko sabi niya, I want to be a producer. Uh, in the, one of the best producers in the country. Look at that vision, ano. When he said that to me, parang, Lord, <laughs> kaya ba? And then, eto yung maganda. The reason why I'm, I'm, I invited you, Ted Hill, for the homeschooler to know na bilang parents, you as a parent, you have to make sure na ginaguide natin ang mga anak natin we have to guide them doon sa direction na gusto nila. No? Mm -hmm. And throughout, because I homeschooled all my children from grade school to high school, I was able to do that for them. No? So, nung nagsabi na sila, the three of them, pa, I want music, pa, I want music, the three of them, so that's a crossroad for us as a parent. Sabi ko, Han, go ba tayo rito? And of course, we prayed about it. Talagang we really seek the Lord. Gagawin pa natin to, And then we make a decision ng college sila. They took exams sa mga colleges na yan. Tapos napasa nila yung mga schools na yan. Academic scholars sila. Yung tatlo ko. So siyempre, parang Lord, indicator na ba ito? In fact, mamaya, kikwento ko sa inyo yung kung paano nakapasok sila ng score. What are the challenges that I'm facing kung may time pa? But Sir Ted, go ahead. Ayoko nang... Okay. Na-excite so, kasi ako masyado. Thank you for that <laughs> input, Brother Ronnie. Let's, can we move on to the next uh, slide? Okay, getting a grip on the vision. So how do you get a, get a grip on the vision? As I mentioned a while ago, that there's the tendency that you get a vision and you think that's what you really want to pursue, but eventually after you experience some frustrations and disappointments, you give up on it. And then you move on to pursue what, what you think is the, the real vision that, that you want. No? So I think initially, if we capture a vision, we also need to get a grip on the vision. So for the students, this is how we do it. As I mentioned earlier, nag-uumpisa kami, meron silang picture reference. And then what we do is we analyze the vision or the picture from every angle. No? So critical visual analysis is part of an art student's training. This exercise sensitizes the right lobe of the brain, enabling the visionary to see from every angle, no? enabling them to get a firm grip on it. So, um, paano ba ito? In terms of art, we, how do we analyze a picture? 
sasabihin natin, okay, we look at the picture, there's a composition, there are elements on the composition, there are subjects there which are the focal point, ito yung pinaka main subject, may konting elements din on the background, and then we analyze the color, is it uh, dominantly cool, is it dominantly warm? Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with color temperatures, when we say cool colors, we are referring to blue, green, violet, blue, green, and blue, violet. And when we say warm colors, we are referring to uh, red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, orange. And this is just not incidental to creating a composition. You need to intentionally plan your colors no? because colors can evoke certain moods. So for example, if you're, the color of your picture is mostly cool colors, it, the, the mood that it would create for your viewers would be, it would create a scene that is restful, that is um, peaceful, that is serene. No? On the other hand, if you use warm colors like red and orange and yellow, it, it uh, evokes a uh, mood which is uh, festive, happy, you know. So part of the color planning is uh, what, what kind of mood would you want your viewers to, to get when they see the picture that you're creating? So we analyze the picture, we analyze the elements of the picture, we analyze the colors which are used, uh, we train them to see from a three-dimensional perspective that elements in the background which are far in the distance are blurry. So we try to replicate a real three-dimensional scene. No? Yung mga malayo, limbawa meron kang bundok dun sa malayo, medyo blurry na yon, soft na yung mga edges ng bundok. No? You don't see much of the details. Pero when it comes to elements in the middle ground, medyo sharper na yung mga lines mo, klaro na yung images. No? Tapos yung mga elements in the foreground, which is the part closest to the viewer, ayun yung talagang malinaw na malinaw na. No? So this is how we analyze pictures. Uh, normally, I would let them, sige, download game pictures from, from the internet, kuha kayo sa Pinterest. No? Pero it doesn't mean that when you find a picture on the internet, that picture is perfect. No? So minsan, yung mga gumagawang artists, may mga mali din, may mga lead, mali din sa composition nila. So when we analyze the picture, I suggest that they take out this element because it doesn't really belong there, it doesn't really enhance the picture, and then they replace it with something else. So hindi naman permanent, hindi naman copy, puro kopya lang yung ginagawa namin. We learn to edit the vision and then enhance it and make it better. So art enables the students to get a grip on the vision. So the, in the same way, when they pursue a vision later on in life, which is not necessarily art-related, they still need, need to get a grip on that vision if they're going to succeed at actually pursuing it. Because if they don't get a grip on it, pag nakaranas na sila ng mga failures, disappointments, frustrations, ang tendency ay hindi siguro yan talaga para sa akin. I'll just give up on it and pursue something else. So this is how art benefits them. It equips them as they go through an art training to get a grip on the vision. So if you have any questions before I proceed to the third point, uh, feel free to ask anything. So for certain no question, go ahead lang. Wala, wala pang question? Wala pa. Maybe okay. sa end, we can, all, we can go back again kung may mga questions sila. Okay, sige. So Wait, I'll move on. Ang question, Sir Ted. So you said, you said yung sa colors, di ba? It, it gives a certain feeling. So yes. while you're teaching the students, you're already telling them or you wait for them to finish the work tapos dun mo interpret yung what they did. Usually, before they even start, they siyempre yung kanilang picture reference, may colors na yun eh, no? Mm. And, and kung yung kinokopya nilang artist knows what he's doing, then meron na rin yung 
that very important element in a composition, it's called dominance. No? So one of the two color temperatures should be dominant. It's either, the painting is either dominantly cool or dominantly warm. So pag equal lang yung cool and warm colors, medyo confusing yung emotion that it is sending out. No? It's gonna be confusing for the viewers. Kasi they would not know actually how to feel. No? It's not uh, restful and it's, and it's not, uh, medyo nasa in-between sila, parang may stalemate. Ano? So mas maganda, one color temperature should be dominant. Hindi ibig sabihin puro cool colors lang. May konting contrasting color din naman. So pag dominant yung cool color, may konting contrasting warm color. Pag dominant naman yung warm colors, may konting contrasting uh, cool color. So, yung so, ibig, dominance ibig sabihin, is important. Ibig sabihin, Sir Ted, hindi pe pwedeng parang balance sila. Dapat dominantly cool or dominantly warm. Tama ba? Oo. Pag, pag ginawa mong bahala na yung colors mo, uh, ano rin eh, medyo hindi ka magsasucceed at uh, getting your message across clearly. Eh. So, every, you have to plan everything beforehand, even the use of colors. It helps kung yung picture reference mo, eh, ano na, if it's made by uh, an artist who knows what he's doing, then nandun na yung element of dominance and contrast doon. Pero kung hindi niya alam yung ginagawa niya, <laughs> kukopyahin mo lang din yung pagkakamali niya. No? Was I able to answer your question, Cha? Yes, yes. Correct. Thank you. Sir Ted, meron pa akong question naman. Uh, mm -hmm. Doon sa, you mentioned kanina, going back, parang you have to copy first before you can be creative, di ba? Yung, even in the in history, di ba? People are copying first before they can make a creation. That yes, correct, uh, you mentioned. So when is the, how, paano yan, nang, I mean, at what level pa nangyayari yung creative arts na yan na, na you don't have to, yung composition or provision, I don't know how you call it. So music, improvisation ang tawag, di ba? How do you call it? In, uh, improvisation, in ano, especially kung jazz. Well, anyway, so, ang, ang definition kasi ng art, it's, uh, it's the use of skill and imagination. So yung, when you copy the elements of a picture, that's when you apply the skill, that your God-given skill to render a picture, no? But when you edit the picture, that's where, in, where you introduce imagination. So, so basically, pag yung ginagawa mo, kinokopya mo lang exactly yung picture. Walang element of imagination doon. So you cannot really call it art kung puro kopya ko lang, kaya lang yung ginagawa mo. So you have to introduce an element of imagination. So we have a picture reference to start with, pero hindi naman namin ini-impose dun sa student na kopyahin niya ng exacto yun. No? So during the early times, uh, even during the 18th century, meron silang tinatawag nilang mga registered copyists. Yung mga registered copyists na yun, they register with the museums and the, and the galleries when they register there, they bring their canvases, their paint, kinokopya nila yung work of the old masters in the galleries. Because that's how you learn, you know. Pero even if they start copying the works of the old masters, eventually their, their, their artistic expression evolves and they come up with their own, their own style, you know? So it starts with copying, but eventually when you introduce imagination, then, then your work evolves. All right. Thank you, Sir Ted. May question dito kay Lay, pero maybe if you can answer it now or later after nung natapos yung presentation. Sabi ni Lay kasi, Hi Lay, can I ask for feedback to an art made by my daughter based on the color temperature? <laughs> okay, sige. We'll do that later after the, okay. show me the pictures Pwede, later. Pwede naman mag-share mag siya sa screen ha. Oh, and sige. then tingnan natin, ito paganda to, practical to eh, para we can get Ito, actual work ng bata, no? And then you can comment on the drawings. No? Okay. Lay, okay lang, share later. This is interesting. Eh? Okay, go ahead. Let's continue. Okay, so the third point is acquiring tools for translating the vision. 
So this is where the art instructor's knowledge of various media comes into play. Kasi minsan yung mga students dadating lang doon, ah, gusto ko mag oil paint, gusto ko mag acrylic, gusto ko mag watercolor without really knowing the characteristics of each medium, no? So bawat medium meron yang particular quality which makes it suitable for a certain kind of subject or also in relation to their personalities, no? So, for example, yung watercolor can suit a personality of a person who is very spontaneous yung nature, no? Kasi watercolor is a medium which, is, which dries fast and you have to also work fast. So, merong mga ganong artists and they become, uh, they create watercolor impressions, no? Quick uh, paintings. So, this is where the art instructor's knowledge can can guide the students. For example, kung yung studyante gusto niyang mag-specialize in portraits, I would suggest in the same way that I do whenever I get portrait commissions, I either do it using soft pastels or oil paint. No? Of course, I can use watercolors or acrylic if I want to. Pwede rin naman, pero may advantage yung soft pastels at yung oil for commissioned portraits. Why? Because yung soft pastel, as opposed to uh, basic oil pastels, yung soft pastels, para siyang chalk. So it enables you to do a lot of blends, especially, which is very important for the skin tones. Para malambot yung skin tone nung, nung tao. No? Uh, yung oil naman, ganun din. Ang oil kasi, matagal siya mag-dry as compared to acrylic. So because it takes a longer time to dry, mas mabiblend mo yung mga, yung skin tones sa portrait na ginagawa mo, no? So you need to know the tools that you're going to be working with for you to, to translate the vision that you see in your mind. Uh, pwede mo rin namang gamitin miski anong, miski anong uh, medium, pero pag alam mo na yung mga medium na mas appropriate, mas magsasucceed ka in in interpreting the vision. You need to know your tools. No? So uh, as for the students, we give them a choice. We have, of course, basic drawing media, basic pa painting media, uh, pencil, charcoal, soft pastels, oil pastels. So painting naman, merong um, acrylic paint, watercolor, gouache, oil, uh, ink, no? So all of these are different media by which you can interpret the vision that you see. But it helps if you know which is the more appropriate tool. So you acquire the, the best tools for translating your vision into reality. So in the same way, uh, when you grow older and you, have, you see a vision that you would want to realize, you also uh, acquire tools necessarily for making it happen. No, as, as if you're a businessman, so what do you need to do? You need the business models. You need, of course, you need the capital. You need the people, partners that you would want to work with who have gifts that differ from you. So you need the, nowadays, the social media is a very valuable tool for promoting your, your business. No, So you need to know the tools that are at your disposal for you to translate your vision to reality. And art helps the student to do this. No? So uh, any more questions before I move on to the fourth and final point? Let's proceed, sir, on the next background. Okay. Okay, so, again, so the fourth point is refining the translated vision to a standard of excellence. So definitely, as an art professional, I will hold my students to a standard of excellence. No? Uh, in, in Christianity, we call it a spirit of excellence. You need to have that spirit of excellence in you. You cannot just make do with Pwede na. Hindi yung, we take that out of your, our vocabulary. Yung, pwede na ba to? Hindi eh. We set the bar. We set a high bar. No? It doesn't mean na yung mga batang studyante, we, 
we uh, set a bar for them which is uh, equivalent to what an adult can do. No? Iba yung standard that we set for children, iba rin yung standard which we set for, for adults. No? So for example, we ingrain that standard of excellence in a student's mind, mindset. So how do we do it? The students will say, okay sir, tapos na ako, I'm finished already, will I sign it? But of course, before they sign it, I ask them, well, show it to me first. And then I see some elements which still need to be corrected. So I'll, I call their attention to it. Ito, ayusin mo to. Ito, medyo sharp, masyado yung lines mo. Soften the lines. Ito, gawin mo to. Yung colors mo, medyo dull na. Naging masyadong maraming patong na yung colors mo. Nag, naging muddy na yung colors. So erasin mo muna. Or if you're working with oil, scrape out mo muna. Tapos patungan uli natin ng bagong brilliant colors. So in other words, in the, we don't uh, agree with the students outright na pag sinabi nilang tapos na, tapos na talaga. You know, because we, we set a standard of excellence. And one, one practice that we, we do is, is this. No? We, we tell our students, pag may nakita kang mali dun sa artwork mo, wag mong iwan na mali. Pag nakita mo na siya na mali, itama mo. Kasi otherwise, pag hindi mo kinorek alam mo, a high bar, and then we teach them not to really say they're done until they're really done. Now, dapat naayos na lahat yung mali bago... Uh, okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so so that's it. We refine the translated vision to a standard of excellence. And I think, again, applying it to other professions, when the children eventually grow up and they pursue visions which are not necessarily in the field of the arts, Ganun pa rin, eh. we, they still need to work on a standard of excellence. And yung, yung work mo, your, your business or whatever it is you're pursuing, you don't really say na I'm done, tapos na to. You need to constantly refine this. Pag may nakikita ka pa rin mga hindi tama improvements, areas of improvements that you can do, so you continue the refining process. No? So I think as chil children who go through art training need to learn this this uh, mindset of uh, working from a point of view of uh, excellence no? they always need to set a standard of excellence for whatever it is that that they pursue so let's let's move on to the next slide uh, so this is actually just a review conclusion uh, not all children who get our artistic training become art professionals. Well, I have many students who have turned out to be art professionals and I'm really happy with that because I see their works posted on social media and natutuwa ako. Some of them have become professional graphic designers, some have become comic book artists, some are in indie publishers, they work on their own comic books, some are website designers. And you know, when I see them turn into profit, it, it really gladdens me you know, that I was able to contribute even a little to their, their training. But the thing is, the good thing is, that, is this, whatever career they decide to pursue in life, definitely their artistic training will contribute to it. It enables them to become uh, visionaries and it helps the, helps them to translate their dreams into reality. So next slide, meron pa ba tayo? Siguro as a ano lang, uh, again we go back to the passage where there is no vision, the people perish. When you're not aiming at a specific goal in life, the tendency is you wander to the left, to the right, and sometimes you accomplish nothing. So you have to have a set goal. You have to have a lifelong vision to pursue. 
If it doesn't work for you, it's never too late to get a vision from God. Get to know God. No? You'll never get a vision from God if you don't know your God. No? So you have to have a personal relationship with God if you are to uh, get or capture a vis God-given vision. So last slide. Uh, I have a picture here. Sabi ni Brother Ronnie, wala daw pictures yung ano ko, sorry. Ha? I'm also used no, to preaching eh. Meron yata dun sa last slide eh. I think I put a... Siguro na, pahanap natin kay Cha. Ted, wala, I have a question. Wala, wala, wala lang last slide. I, I have a question, sir Ted. Okay, sige, sige, sure. You mentioned kanina yung standard of excellence. You can ask okay. your question now. I think it's open. No? Okay. Uh, you mentioned standard of excellence. Now, ako parents and I want to teach my children, no? Ano, what can art do for character formation in, in your own opinion? How do you, how helpful it is to a parent uh, engaging yung kanyang anak sa art? No? Will it help character formation? Ba? Definitely, no? How, like a while ago, I mentioned yung integrity. That when you see something wrong and then you don't correct it, your integrity suffers, no? So early on in life, we early on in life we teach our children to be truthful, di ba? Oy, wag ka magsisinungaling, masama yan. You need to tell the truth. No, don't hide things from me. I'm your parents. I'm here to guide you and help you. So tell me the truth. So we, you know, we instruct them to be truthful in everything. And it follows, it goes on. The same thing is true in life, no? Dapat maging makatotohanan ka sa sarili mo at sa ibang tao. So pag meron kang ginagawa, tapos um, alam mong pwede mo pang i-improve yung ginagawa mo, pero hindi mo in-improve. Alam mo kung paano mo i-correct, pero hindi mo kinorek. For whatever reason, baka tinatamad ka lang. No? So in the process, your integrity suffers. And that, that is not right. Kasi if you keep on doing that, later on, magsasuffer yung excellence ng ginagawa mo. But if you are truthful in everything you do, you are, gusto mo talagang, you don't want your integrity tarnished, then uh, you become, in many ways, parang OCD, you know? <laughs> parang medyo obsessive, compulsive ka, at least when it regar with regards to conforming to truth. No? So I think it will benefit the children a lot. Pag, Totoo, alam nilang makatotohanan sila. Makatotohanan sila sa Diyos, makatotohanan sila sa sarili nila, at makatotohanan sila sa ibang tao. Sir Ted, yung standard of excellence, let me ask you. Meron kasing dalawang mindset na, I don't know, I heard this word. Yung parang, uh, opinion lang ito, no? Sir Ted, standard of excellence. When you say to your child, for example, you're a parent. Now, yung anak mo is nagkagawa ng mga. Is it okay ba to say na, ay, ang ganda niyan, sa totoo lang, hindi naman pala. Or how do you, as a parent, how do you uh, handle that so that yung anak mo naman will have a mindset of growth and uh, improvement without, on the other side naman, uh, putting him down or uh, parang sinasabi mo na you're not an artist or you're not good enough. So how do you do that when you're teaching your children yung work of art. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, yung standard of excellence natin, hindi siya fixed, no? it, it varies. In other words, you don't expect a 10-year-old child or an 8-year-old child to perform like an adult would. No? So iba yung standard mo sa bata, iba yung standard mo sa matanda. So dapat, when you look at the, the work of your children, hanapin mo yung maganda. Compliment your children on the good uh, part that you see dun sa artistic expression nila. So ang practice natin yata dyan as Christian parents is sandwich mo yung, yung criticism mo. It should always be constructive. You start out with a compliment and then if you see something that needs correction, Point it out to him. Tapos tapusin mo ulit with a compliment. No? So isandwich mo yung, yung, create, yung constructive criticism, criticism mo with two compliments to start with and to end it with. So in the process, hindi nagsasuffer yung self-esteem ng anak mo at na-encourage mo sila in the process. Kasi I believe maraming mga parents na you know, they want their children to be 
uh, yung self esteem di ba yan yung crucial mm-hmm. din eh when you as a homeschooler minsan it could either uh, impact your children positively or negatively kung how you handle uh, criticizing the work of your children di ba so mm-hmm. you really have to be encouraging at the same time di ba parang uh, sasabihin mo rin kung talagang there's an area that needs correction no? uh, of course tama yung certain na hindi mo naman pwede compare sa work mo yung work nila, di ba? Like mm. when we enrolled to your, to your class before, syempre ako medyo mas advanced ako sa anak ko, pero hindi kasi nasabi na <laughs> hindi maganda yung ginawa mo. <laughs> Talagang, I really encourage yung ako, okay to, ganito. But if I'm, ano, kumbaga parang super osgy naman ako na ayusin mo to, I think it will not uh, give positive, ano, uh, it will not give a positive ano, uh, impact sa sa bata. So, can I give some, questions? Yeah. Can ahead, I give some pointers, Brother Ronnie? Especially kung yung bata nag-start out pa lang and yung napansin mong talagang mahilig siya mag-express uh, creatively, I think it's very important that you let them enjoy what they're doing. No? So in other words, uh, if very early onset nag-uumpisa pa lang sila, sobrang rigid na kagad yung standard na sinet-set mo. Ang tendency, ma- ma- mawawal, madi-discourage sila, hindi na sila magpapatuloy. So they have to find art enjoyable to start with. So, sa umpisa, be very loose. Just let them express themselves. Huwag mo muna masyadong, huwag ka muna mag-set ng very rigid standard. Kasi dapat, they have to see art as something that's enjoyable. No? Ngayon, pag nakikita mong may, nag, may make progress na sila and you can guide them, then you gradually set standards na, na that will serve as guidelines for them. Pero don't take away their joy by being harshly critical doon sa kanilang ginagawa. So you have to be very careful with your words. You have to be really tactful in dealing, especially with very little children. No? Sir Ted, I have a question. Now, kasi sa, ano, sa internet ngayon, at saka technology, graphics are there, tapos they can actually draw from a computer, they can do colorings. So, and, and yung ginagawa natin are traditional art to be used medium, right? So, paano mo i-memory yun? And some children kasi parang uh, attracted sila sa computers and doing artwork via... Uh, you know, screen, no? Meron nang ngayon mag-drawing ka sa screen, you can actually use a a, uh, a pencil type. Anong tawag sa ganun? Yung sa... Stylus. Uh, stylus. Stylus on a tablet, and then, yes. Yun, ngayon, meron ka namang gagamitin na pencil tsaka yung mga mediums. How do you... Uh, what's your take on that now? Kasi technology, nangyayari yan, eh, na mawawala ba yung dating art? Ito ba? Ay, how do you handle that na because of that uh, changes well, na nangyayari ngayon sa ating... Uh, well, our, definitely, as as parents, we have to be open to new new media. No? For example, since I'm a teacher, nung nakita kong lumalabas na to way, way back pa, when the computer graphics was just starting, I had to learn computer graphics myself. I have to learn the different art softwares, learn Photoshop, learn Painter, late, learn 3D rendering. Kasi eventually, students will ask me questions and I have to give them an answer. So eventually, I got into uh, prints using uh, computer-generated art. And even up to now, ginagawa ko pa rin yun. I still produce limited edition prints using Photoshop, using photography, using Painter, using various kinds of uh, digital media. So definitely, we have to be open. Especially kung yung anak mo magba-branch out into advertising, then talagang gagamit talaga sila ng modern media. But definitely, yung traditional media, they have to have uh, a basic training kasi yan talaga, yung, yan talaga yung magiging kumbaga foundation nila. Kung hindi man lang sila marunong mag-drawing tapos nandun na kagad sila sa mga computer-generated images, medyo wala silang grasp talaga nung, nung, ano, nung actual drawing process. Eh, no? So, kailangan magsimula din sila yeah. sa traditional. Pero we are open to all kinds of modern media. Yeah, that's great. I remember, uh, Teacher Ted, eh, merong isang architect 
na AutoCAD ka agad ang ginamit. So, during the field, nag-inspection sila. Hindi siya marunong masyado dun sa medium na pencil and paper. <laughs> so, ngayon, uh, hindi niya ma-express ngayon yung kanyang uh, idea dun sa uh, sa client na this is what I wanted. And then, hindi niya ma-drawing, ano? Eh, wala uh-huh. naman siya dalang computer sa... Sa, sa bundok, di ba? <laughs> you know? <laughs> This practical application lang. I mean, getting from what you mentioned, dapat yung basic alam din talaga nila. No? They use some pencils, they use a pastel, right? Uh-huh. And watercolor before they go into the technology rin naman. So, well, that's my take. Ano, that's a minute. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we have a few minutes pa. Uh, do you have any question for Sir Ted? Grabe, very informative yung yung ano mo certain and second talagang uh, what i like about your presentation is yung parang metaphor nung buhay eh no so uh, i realize may mga tao na nung una nakita kaagad kung anong gustong gawin sa life no they catch the vision already they they were able to see it no pero for some people in the middle of life mid life iba naman at the end of life pero for me personally ako nag-enjoy ako because my children really Uh, when I homeschool them, I I, kumbaga, I help them find talaga yung gusto nila. And right now, they are enjoying what they're doing now. Sabi mo nga kanina, Sir Ted, na as if they're not working. So, mm-hmm. minsan they're doing something na parang hindi na papagod tong ang mga anak ko na to. When they find ano, time to, meron silang inspiration to create new music. Actually, itong COVID, nakagawa sila ng album eh. I mean, meron silang song na ilalabas. Sabi ko, my goodness. Lalabas Wag naman sana ko be the title, ha? Ah, no, 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 no. Hindi naman. But they were able to do it and then they enjoyed it. Parang, oh my goodness. Tapos, well, that's something na for as a parent, no? Find something. Kung baga, being, ito yung maganda sa homeschooling. Eh. Nakikita nyo at an early age kung ano ba yung gusto ng anak niyo. If they want math or mahilig sila sa math, sa music, sa art, sa English, sa science, composition, lahat po nun, nakikita nyo yun. And all we have to do is really watch our children. We have to be involved in their learning, no? Involve po natin sila lahat. Kasi uh, just to share with you, nung hinomhul ko po yung anak ko, lahat in-explore ko. Kung magiging artist sila, in-enroll ko kay Sir Ted. Mga talagang, uh, these are people na I trust, people na nakita ko how they really work, work, work of excellence. Hinanap ko talaga, hindi ako nag nagtipid na humanap lang ng basta artist or marunong mag-drawing, you know. And I also enrolled my kids to the top musicians in the planet, the Philippines, no? Yung drummer na si, uh, you know, yung mga sikat na, you know. and, and really, uh, nag-swimming sila, nag-sucker sila, we explore everything in the world kung saan sila, naghanap ako ng teacher to teach them how to speak, to, to dialogue, to, and everything. That's the value of, you know, for, uh, na ma-involve tayo sa ating mga anak. No? And this is the purpose of our community. No? We wanted people, no? we're inviting some homeschoolers then who are already successful dito sa homeschooling para to help out itong community natin. Sir, I really want to thank, kung wala na question, I really want to thank you, Sir Ted, for coming over. Thank I hope dito yung huli. Uh, as we grow, yes. we will probably ask you to share more about this, ano, yung, yung uh, art. By the way, for some people who are here today, We will post sa ating Facebook uh, uh, private page. If you are a member, hindi pa kayo member, mag-like lang po kayo to be part of it. Kasi we will be announcing kung pa- paano kayo makaka-connect kay Sir Ted. Kung gusto niyo yung anak niya to study ano, art uh, online. No? He's been doing this long time, ano pa, matagal na, uh, using Facebook Messenger. But now he can help you, no? Uh, matulungan kayo sa mga questions about art, no? And actually, is Uh, teaching din sa online sa ngayon. So, kung wala na question, Lay, you, you want to share pa ba? Picture or, ni Lay, uh, yes. or, uh, do, do you want? Or, ikanin natin si Lay. Baka, para lang for the last, ano, before we we go on, very interesting. I'm really happy, Sir Ted, for... Actually, yes, Lay. Hi, Lay. Hello. Ayan, Hello. Ayan, Hello. Ayan, Hello. Inaabangan niya nga po eh. Ay, na-miss ko na yung mga <laughs> girls nyo. Na-miss ko na yung mga girls mo, Lea. Hello. 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 Why I miss you. I am. <laughs> Nako, mabuti nakita ko sila. <laughs> and just started mga few weeks ago, Sir Ted. Alright. Okay. How old is she? She's eight years old. Okay. Eight. 
And she oh, she looks super excited. Sige nga, sige nga. Yan, yan. Oh, show, your, show your work. Wow, ang ganda-ganda. Huh? Tapos, nag- ito po, yung mga sunod-sunod na niya, kasi natuwa nga siya. Ito yung mga nakikita ko na mga ginagawa niya. Okay. And then, after that, ito na siya. Wow. Wow, well, if you will notice, meron na siyang dominance, ano? Meron na siyang cool, dominantly cool colors and dominantly warm colors. So, these children Natural definitely... Natural ba yun, do? Natural, ano? Kung ba nga... Eight years old. Wow. And then, after that, ito na po yung sumunod. Oh, wow. Okay. So, definitely, may progress na, no? Ayan. And then, Ayan. ito. Okay. Anong medium nila dyan? Poster paint? Opo, poster paint lang. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's a good medium to start with. Oh, may waterfall pa. <laughs> Ganda. So definitely, as early as this, pakikita mo na, no? As early as this, the children are already showing potential. So, congratulations, M. Galing naman ang mga drawings nila. Yeah. Hello, I miss you. Okay, you have very pretty daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, salamat. Thank you, ha. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Lay. You know, okay. So, kung wala, yeah, kung wala na pong questions, no, uh, we would like to thank everyone who joined us today. Don't worry. We are just starting out, no, kasi this is actually our third forum or third or fourth forum, no? We are just starting. So, we'll have more uh, for you, mga homeschoolers, no? Lea and I are crafting new uh, materials no? or, or sharing no? sa forum natin. Open forum po ito at the end of every session. And when we grow, grow, grow na yung chap, uh, ating uh, community, we'll do some more of ano, support no? for your children. So, alright. So, thank you so much. Parang ayaw, ayaw ka na umalis. And re- <laughs> Salamat. And, okay, thank you very okay. much. By the way, Brother yeah. Ronnie and Cha, yeah. thank you very much. I will, I will just have an announcement Benji, before we you. leave. Uh, before you leave, I will just have an announcement lang. Uh, a few minutes lang para lang for, for, for the participants here. No? Para, what, what we're trying to do now next week, ito po, yan. I'll show you po, wala namang Q&A. So, meron po tayong mga announcement lang dito. Uh, by next week, uh, we are trying to ano, create some events for you, no? Uh, on homeschooling series, we'll also be uh, looking at the choosing curriculum method. We call it Charlotte Mason method. How to manage your homeschooling. And we'll be uh, inviting a person, no? Who is into foreign language, no? Si Kiel, Ezekiel po, is, uh, will be one of our guests. Maybe next week or the other week, nag-arrange po po kami ng schedule. For your children to learn, uh, at foreign language. Okay, thank you so much and I hope you uh, enjoy your, your day today. Uh, let me end with a quote. Too often we give children answers to remember rather than problems to solve. No? So thank you so much everyone and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye everyone.